pals, I'm here today to do a really um, fun video, I think it is anyway, it's probably going to be quite chaotic because I'm doing a video, it's just like a mishmash of loads of things. I was thinking about filming a March TBR, then I thought well I need to do a book haul as well because loads of these books are new from the library, and then I thought that I just wanted to do like a general chatty catch up video, and then I thought about doing like a library check-in video. I don't know if any of you watch people who do library check-ins, but I really love them when they like talk about the books they're returning because they've read them, talking about the books they're now picking up, and then like talking about when they're due back and when they have to read them. I'm really hoping you can hear me over the torrential downpour outside. I think my mic will hopefully not be picking it up, but if it is, then like hopefully it's a nice like ASMR rain, rain sound. So I am um, sitting somewhere different. Um, I usually sit upstairs in front of my bookshelves, but recently I, I watch a lot of uh, booktube obviously, and I tend to prefer when people just sit in their like living space and you don't just see books behind them, and so I thought maybe I would go back to doing that. Um, so yeah, let me know what you prefer, if you prefer uh, this sort of setting or me just sitting in front of the books, and I will take that on board. So I'm going to crack on because I fear this video could be very, very long. Uh, one more thing I do want to say is this is a new um, top I got myself. It's actually part of like a matching set. So I've got um, like linen trousers that match it. Um, and when I tried them on, I said to Johnny, how are they? Do they look all right? And he said, um, yeah, I like them. You look like a monk, but in a good way. And I was like, thanks. But anyway, when I got dressed the day, because I thought um, it would pair well with this, although the green isn't exactly the same. Um, I felt like, like a little extra from the Shire. Um, this isn't the sort of thing hobbits wear, so I don't really know why I feel that, but do you know what I mean? I feel like I fit in in like some like medieval type pub in like a fantasy setting. So and that's the vibe I'm going for today. So anyway, onto the books. So I'm having more time this year at the moment, at least to make more content. I'm not sure how that's going to go, but I am enjoying it while it lasts. And so I'm trying to do lots more sort of bookish projects that I can make videos on. And yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. So a couple of um, these groups fit into those. Um, so one of them was just, I made an autumn and winter TBR um, with books that I like to read in the autumn and winter time, I put about 20 books on it. I'll link it in the cards above. And I've only read about half of them. And obviously spring starts, well, it feels like spring already here. Lots of the um, buds have started to come out, but um, yeah, a few more weeks left of winter. So I'm gonna try and read these three because out of the ones I haven't read, these are the ones I'm most excited about. Um, the first one is And Then She Fell by Alicia Elliott. This is her first novel. Um, she had a uh, essay collection called A Mind Spread Out on the Ground, which I really enjoyed and would definitely recommend. And this is a literary horror um, that takes inspiration from um, indigenous culture. This author is part of the Mohawk tribe. And it is based around a new mother who is married to a white man who doesn't believe that the neighbors are being racist towards her. And this all sort of like builds up um, and yeah, it's, it's supposed to be um, quite spooky. So I'm really looking forward to this one. I actually did start it a while ago and read 30 pages and really liked it, but um, I had to take it back to the library. Um, at my library, you, you can borrow a book for three weeks, you can renew it twice, you can effectively have it for nine weeks and then you have to return it. And that happened, so I returned it, but then I realized that I could just like borrow it again and it would count as a new borrow. So I've started to do that a lot more, which is very naughty. Um, so yeah, like I stopped reading it and started reading other things when I thought I had to take it back, but now I can start reading it again. The next one I don't think I can really talk about much because it's actually the third book in sort of a trilogy, although I think the author and the publisher aren't necessarily pushing it as a trilogy, like you could read them in any order. Um, but the third book is The Circle by Katharina Vermet. I absolutely loved The Break and The Strangers by this author, I would highly recommend them. You follow the same group of women and I guess each of them would sort of spoil something about the other, but like there's also Easter eggs, but, but you could read them and not know what happened before and you would understand them. Um, I gave both of the previous books five stars, absolutely loved them. This has only been published in Canada and it's been out for a few months, more than a few months actually. And I was trying to get hold of it. I couldn't get it anywhere. I eventually paid 43 pounds for this. Um, including shipping to the UK, which is the most I've ever spent on any book, and it's not even that long, it's just over 200 pages. So it's absolutely obscene, but I think it's highly likely I'm gonna love it. And um, I just didn't wanna to have to keep waiting because I have no idea when it will be um, more easily accessible in the UK. So yeah, 
there's that one so a very naughty purchase and then the third one is landscapes by christine lee this is a sort of a dystopian novel set in the english countryside in a country house we feel like this uh, british asian woman who is living there with her partner and then her partner's brother i think turns up who is someone who was in her past and i think he was really abusive and yeah you're sort of following this story and um, this says it really turns the like english country house novel on its head um so i'm really looking forward to um seeing how it handles it and then recently i did a video where i spoke about 20 books that i saw other booktubers put in their favorite books of 2023 videos and i'm trying to um, do those as reading blogs so they're gonna either be three or four reading blogs depending on how many books i put in each video but i managed to get hold of the books from two of the booktubers um four from jen and two from ben and so i'm um about to start filming a reading vlog um i've barely done any reading vlogs and i feel like i'm really not very good at them but i really like watching them so i'm going to try harder this year so the two from ben are oh, and i'm actually currently started reading one of them um soldier sailor by claire kilroy and Rianne Bell by Priya Hine. Again, you can find more about them in the video. This is a coming of age story about a young girl in Mauritius. And this is a story about a, um, a, a new mother in Ireland who's um, is very stream of consciousness. Um, yeah, very interesting. And then the four from Jen are Idol Burning by Rinat Sami. Watching Woman and Girls by Danielle Pender. This is a short story collection. Ordinary Wonder Tales by Emily Urquhart. This is an essay collection. And Playing Games by Huma Qureshi. So like I said, go and check that video out if you want to hear more. Um, I don't want to spend too long talking about books you've already heard me talk about. Then I have a stack of books here that I think I may have mentioned in one video or another, probably in an anticipated releases video, or maybe even in my Woman's Prize for fiction long list prediction video which was up a few days ago um so yeah i won't mention them too much one of them wasn't in either of those but i've definitely hauled it um and one of my goals for this year was to read i think 10 um translated books because i've been awful at reading translated books and i haven't read any yet so i need to really read three this month um so one of them will be eleanor knows by claudia pinheiro i've heard amazing things about this um the other one will be Idle Burning, and then the third will be Please Look After Mum, because we are reading that for the Patreon book club um, that I run every month. For the last two months, the Patreon book club has been my favourite book of each month for me, so I'm, I'm hoping that it will continue. Um, and I haven't read any books by this author, she has loads, I hear loads of people rave about her, so I'm hoping to really enjoy this. Um, you can join any of the tiers on my Patreon, you can have access to all four tiers, for uh, one dollar a month if you're interested it's always linked down below and then the other ones are all new releases i have so many new releases at the moment i'm just absolutely obsessed with my library they're pretty good at buying new releases but i've asked them so far this year i think to buy 10 books and they have approved nine of the 10 one of them they just couldn't get a hold of um because it's not published in the uk but um they said yes to all the others so it's very exciting so um the four books i have are Mongrel by Hannah Coe Footman. This is a novel that follows uh, three perspectives of uh, Japanese or Japanese British young women um, and their stories are all connected somehow. Winter Animals by Ashani Lewis. This is being compared to Luster by Raven Lalani and The Secret History by Donna Tartt. Um, I think this woman is stuck on like a mountain because of a snowstorm and she gets involved with these this group of uh, teenage boys and things start to get a bit dark and out of control so intrigued by this one um jaded by ella lee this follows a, a young asian british woman who feels like she has sort of the perfect life and everything's going really well for her and then something awful happens to her i think in the workplace i think some type of sexual assault and everybody sort of wants her to keep quiet about that including her employers and it's about how she um how she deals with that and how it sort of cracks her life open and then in memory of us by jacqueline roy which is a sort of historical fiction novel part of this is set in the 50s and 60s in london it follows these uh two sisters who are part of the windrush generation but you are watching them through the eyes of one of the sisters when she is an old lady and she's struggling with dementia in an old people's home 
and she's trying to remember why her and her sister don't talk anymore um, and you're sort of trying to uncover that mystery. Then I have four more that I don't think I've spoken about anywhere. I didn't know about these four when I made my anticipated releases videos for the year. Um, and I just stumbled across these when I was browsing other books, a couple of them. Um, I always look to see what new books my library have purchased and I just stumbled across them um, when I was looking at that. So one of them, and I have no idea where this book is gonna go because the blurb is quite um, sort of vague. And that is Ava Anna Ada by Ali Miller. Um, I think that's a pretty brilliant cover. Um, and this author previously wrote a memoir called The Last Days, which I actually started reading last year. Um, but I started reading it and I was in quite a difficult place mentally and it's a pretty depressing memoir, so I put it down. Um, but I know it's one I would really enjoy, so I definitely need to go back to it. So this is her first novel. And yeah, like I said, the blurb is kind of confusing. It says that um, it's set during summer and Anna is kicking her dying dog on the grass, but someone is watching her, the girl, Ava. Outside, the brutal summer blisters on, inside over the course of one claustrophobic week, Anna and Ava become caught up in their own world, become swallowed by each otherness. But what does Ava really want? It says this is braiding climate chaos, lust, poetry and violence. This debut novel is a contemporary fable against images and their enduring hold on us. And I read the, um, you know, the um, quotes on the back from different authors. And yeah, they sound really interesting. Um, one of them says, shocking and uncompromising, Miller's writing is visceral and vibrant, piercingly astute in rendering the inner thoughts and raw emotions of her protagonists, unearthing diamonds of humanity from the mire of brutality. And one says it's a bracingly original tale of lust and malice amidst dementing heat, general unravelling and the late nightmares of a screaming planet. So yeah, I think this one might get pretty dark and I am very much intrigued by it. And then the next one is actually the second book from an author whose first book I've meant to read and haven't yet. Um, and this one is The Gallopers by John Ransom. So I heard about The Whale Tattoo, um, which is his first book, primarily because it's set in the area that I'm from, which not many books are. Um, and then it won the uh, Polari Prize last year. So I was like, oh, I need to read it even more. But then I saw that my library had picked up this new one. So I'm probably gonna start here with his writing. Um, this is a fairly short novel that's from the perspectives of three men whose lives sort of become um, entangled together. We follow them um, from 1953. It says three men are bound together in a blistering story that spans 30 years from 1953 into the 1980s and the AIDS epidemic. This is a visceral and mesmerizing novel of deceit, desire and unspeakable loss. Um, it says that he's a powerful new voice of gay working class life. This eloquent, heartfelt debut pulls the reader right beside him and announces a writer of real talent. So yeah, I am um, very interested in this one. Um, and it sounds like one that could be like in contention for the book along list. So we shall see. This next one I hadn't heard of at all. It's from a really small UK press called Blue Moose Books. And when I was just scrolling through books my library had bought, I saw the title on the cover and thought, hmm. So I clicked on it and immediately uh, put it on hold. And that is Christ on a Bike by Orla Owen. This book has a really vague synopsis. And when I went to read reviews, nearly every review said it's better to not know much going in. I think this could go some quite bizarre places. I'm not sure how bizarre. And my enjoyment may depend on that because I don't love like super, I don't mind like wacky characters, but I'm not a fan of bizarre in terms of like, you know, like magic and stuff. Um, I either like, proper epic fantasy set in another world or like realistic stuff. So this woman receives an unexpected inheritance, but there are three rules attached that must be followed. It says, as she settles into her new life, she begins to feel trapped. The past is ever present. She, she's convinced herself that the villagers are watching her and desperate to control her own future. She tries to break free. It says, this is Black Mirror meets Tales of the Unexpected with Shades of Shirley Jackson. I think this is a Welsh novel as well, which is nice because I feel like I don't read many Welsh novels. And yeah, um, I read the first couple of pages and this seems to be quite interesting in tone as well. So yeah, another one I don't really know much about. I feel like this and Ava Anna Ada, is it Ava Anna Ada? Yes, it is. Could both be a quite weird novel, so we shall see. And then this next one I heard um, Sean talk about over at Story Time. I'm pretty sure I've heard her talk about more books from this author. And I've always meant to read one of her books and then just haven't got around to it. And that when I heard that this one featured a cult, I was like, that's the one I will start with. 
and that is Black Sheep by Rachel Harrison. This is a horror novel. Um, Rachel Harrison is a, a horror author. And it's kind of odd because when I was a teenager, probably from the age of like 13 to 15, I read like nearly all horror. Uh, I read lots and lots of point horror and I had favourite horror novels that I read again and again and again. And um, yeah, and then I, I guess I just started reading adult fiction and just completely stopped reading horror. And I'd sort of forgotten that it was even something I did until I um, like was thinking about it uh, last year. And so, yeah, I would like to try and dab my toe back into horror. But um, yeah, I'm not quite sure where to start. So I thought this sounded good. I think she always focuses on um, like uh, a couple of women or a group of women um, and their interactions with one another, which I think sounds really interesting. It says, nobody has a normal family, but Vesper writes is truly something else. She left her home at 18 and never looked back, mostly because she was told that leaving the staunchly religious community she grew up in meant she couldn't return. But then an invitation to the wedding of Vesper's cousin Rosie arrives. Something inside her insists she go, even if it means returning to the toxic environment she escaped, even if it means reuniting with her mother Constance, a former horror film star and forever ice queen. When Vesper's homecoming exhumes a terrible secret, she's forced to reckon with her family's beliefs and her own crisis of faith in this fiery, irreverent horror novel from the acclaimed author of Cackle, Such Sharp Teeth and Bad Dolls. I think it's Cackle I've heard quite a lot about. I think that might be... Is that the witchy one and such a teeth is the werewolf one? I'm not sure. If I wasn't reading anything else and I could just read what I felt like reading, the first couple of pages of this like really pulled me in. I feel like I'm in the mood to read something that I could just like inhale um, and really want to um, find out what's going to happen. So intrigued by this one. And I think this is quite a new release, but I think it maybe went straight to paperback in the UK. And then I have a stack of non-fiction books, which are a, a bit of a mixture. Most of them are um, new to me books. So I, I'll do these ones first and then I'll talk about the ones that are for the uh, Woman's Prize for Nonfiction long list. So firstly I recently bought myself a copy of Almost American Girl by Robin Ha. This is an illustrated um, memoir. I really enjoy graphic memoirs and I'm hoping to do a video on them soon um, but I also like to have a certain number of books to put in a recommendations video um, and I just feel like I'm like one or two short so um, yeah, I'm really hoping I enjoy this one so that it can be featured in the video. This is about a young girl who is being raised by a single mother in Seoul, Korea. And then they had a uh, vacation to visit friends in Alabama and that ended up being like a permanent relocation. Um, and so, yeah, you basically watch her story as she really struggles to fit in in her new culture. And yeah, I really enjoy graphic memoirs like this. So I'm hopeful um, this will be one that I will really like. Then one I think I mentioned probably a few months ago is one I also had to return to the library because somebody had um, requested it. So obviously I can't keep renewing it when somebody else is waiting for it. Um, so I immediately put it back on hold, um, which means I've paid to put it on hold twice, which is rather silly, but um, yeah, these things happen. And that is Some of Us Just Fall on Nature and Not Getting Better by Polly Atkin. This is a memoir. Um, again, someone else has this on hold, so I do need to actually read it this time. Um, and it basically says that um, the author had years of unexplained health problems um, and she was finally diagnosed with two chronic conditions in her 30s. It combines memoir, pathography and nature writing to trace a fascinating journey through illness, a journey which led Polly to her current home in the Lake District, where outdoor swimming is purported to cure rule and where every day she turns in the natural world to help tame her illness. Um, I am really interested in memoirs about disability and chronic illnesses, um, particularly when they're written by women. And so, yeah, I have high hopes for this one and I want to actually read it this time. Um, and not keep returning it unread. And then this next one is sort of unusual for me because I don't usually read books about this type of topic, but I really enjoyed this author's first memoir, which was Lowborn. And so I, yeah, just sort of wanted to follow her on the next step in her journey. And um, this memoir is called Newborn, Running Away, Breaking from the Past and Building a New Family by Kerry Hudson. So Lowborn was about the fact that um, Kerry Hudson grew up in a really working class family that really struggled with poverty and she um, went through the foster care system and had quite a, I guess what you would call like a messy, um, non-traditional upbringing. So this memoir is about what it was like for her and her partner to decide to have this child and, and raise this baby together and how she's doing that without really having learned how to mother from her own mother and having to build like her own family values because she can't pull from much that she learned as a child herself. And so, yeah, I'm just interested. I really liked her voice in Lowborn and I'm not massively interested. 
I don't want children myself, so it's not something I'm super compelled to read because it's not like I have this shared experience and I sort of want to hear how other people feel. However, I have lots of people in my life who have children and I, um, I love my friend's children, I love my nieces, but I also don't understand how so many people can be so willing to give up so much of themselves and so I kind of find that fascinating um, how much a mother in particular is expected to give up um, by society so yeah I'm um, interested to see if that sort of dives into that and that has been interesting reading um, Soldier Sailor because if I wasn't already sure I didn't want children, um, that would have clarified it for me. And the next one is one that was recommended to me by one of my patrons. We have like a Discord that you can join and uh, we have lots of different threads, but one of them is what we're currently reading. Um, and I always love to hear what everyone's reading. And yeah, one of the patrons was reading this book um, and they said to me like, I think there's a chance you'd really enjoy this one. So I checked and my library had it and I immediately requested it. And that is a Miss Major Speaks Conversations with a Black Trans Revolutionary by Toshio Maranuk and Miss Major. So this is basically like a transcribed interview um, between the two people. And Miss Major, who's someone I hadn't heard of, so I think I'll get a lot out of this, um, is a veteran of the infamous Stonewall riots, a former sex worker and a transgender elder and activist who survived Bellevue Psychiatric Hospital, New York's jail system and the HIV AIDS crisis. For over 50 years, she has been on the front line of struggles for queer liberation. And in this brilliant and moving conversation, she presents a remarkable life told with intimacy, warmth and an irresistible levity and a roadmap for those navigating the challenges black, brown, queer and trans youth face. So yeah, I think this is going to be really interesting. It's a really short one. Um, but I'm sure I'll get a lot out of it. And what I like about these books is they usually reference quite a lot of other works um, that I can then go and pick up and read as well. Then I have a couple of books from the Women's Prize for, for non-fiction long list. Here's what happened, right? I was pretty convinced that I wouldn't be that interested in the Women's Prize for non-fiction long list because the Women's Prize for fiction in general leans a bit more commercial than my reading tastes tend to be. So I thought that was gonna be the case with nonfiction. And I'd say that with nonfiction, my tastes lean even further away from the commercial. So I tend to like reading like any type of personal stories, um, you know, in terms of how they're written. But if I'm reading the sort of like informative books, my preference would be for them to be written by an academic rather than a journalist. And so initially, uh, and that's simply because I, would rather struggle and think, oh, I need more context, I better go look into that, than think, I already know this, I'm learning nothing from this book, right? So my preference, <laughs> my preference is to struggle. Um, so I, I thought that maybe the long list wouldn't be for me. As soon as the long list was announced, I was like, bloody hell, like I'm pretty much interested in most of these. Now there's a couple that I'm just not gonna be interested in. I think one of them is called Dictionary People, sounds really boring. Um, one of them is about some queens, I probably should care more about all that type of history. Like, I feel like it's just something you should know, but also I'm completely like anti-monarchy. So um, I also don't want to spend loads of my time reading about them. Um, and yeah, there's a few others I'm probably not remembering now that I wasn't super interested in. But because I thought, well, most of them sound like books I would be happy to read, I requested nearly all of them at my library. One of them I'd already read, which is How to Say Babylon by Safia Sinclair. I spoke about that in a recent wrap up, I'll link above. I really enjoyed it. I listened to it on audio, which I'd highly recommend because she narrates it beautifully. I am partway through Doppelganger by Naomi Klein. I was reading it physically, and I'm gonna be honest here and say I wasn't loving it. First few chapters, I was really engaged and I kept reading bits out to Johnny and I was like, God, this is so interesting. And then I got up to chapter maybe eight or nine and I started to think, <laughs> This is very leaning towards like American culture and like American news readers and like panel hosts who I don't know about. And um, also you're just sort of like telling me he said this and then she said this. Um, so I started to not love it as much. And then I had to return to the library, but then I was like, I really do think I should try and continue. So I got it on audio. So I am gonna try and carry on with that one. And then I already had a copy of A Flat Place by Noreen Masood, which is a memoir. I was so happy to see this long list that I didn't realise it was eligible. I think it came out quite early in the eligibility window. So yeah, I just sort of hadn't realised that it had a shot. 
So um, yeah, I was, I was really happy to see this one there. This is a memoir about the author's experiences with flat places. Um, she grew up in Lahore in India and then has yeah, spent lots of time around different parts of the world. Um, and one of those parts of the world she has spent some time in is uh, the area where I'm from, which is known for being very, very flat. And I love a memoir, so I'm hoping to really enjoy this one. And then the only, um, two, I, I sort of guessed a few books of, we were um, chatting on my Patreon Discord again about which ones we thought would make it. And I thought the doppelganger was like a dead cert. And I also thought that How to Say Babylon was a dead cert because it's just been, um, everyone's been loving it. But I also thought that um, Splinters by Leslie Jameson had a good chance because I haven't read any of her books, but I know people always rave about her. Um, and I knew that one was eligible. And there was another one I also was convinced would make it that I now don't remember. So that isn't very useful, is it? But, um, but yeah, most of the other ones I, to be honest, like hadn't heard of or had like a glancing awareness of. Um, so I went and requested like nearly all of them at the library. And I, um, for about 48 hours, I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna request all these books and I'm just gonna try and read them all. And I'm gonna try and read all the Women's Prize for Fiction long list as well. And all these other books I've got from the library and it's all gonna be doable. And then I was like, who the fuck are you kidding? So I went back on my library and canceled most of them and thought to myself, you know what? Maybe with the nonfiction one, you should wait and just read the shortlist, depending on what's on the shortlist. Um, but yeah, there were a couple I was still um, interested enough in that I thought I wanna read them like ASAP. One of them is Some People Need Killing, a memoir of murder in the Philippines by Patricia Evangelista. And yeah, this is quite a chunky one, so we shall see how long this takes me. Um, so this author is a journalist who, um, she says her job is to go places where people die. I pack my bags, talk to the survivors, write their stories, then go home to wait for the next catastrophe. I don't wait long. This is a meticulously reported and deeply human chronicle of the Philippines drug war. For six years, the author chronicled the killings carried out by the police and vigilantes in the name of Duterte's War on Drugs, a war that has led to the slaughter of thousands. This book takes its title from a vigilante whose words seem to reflect the psychological accommodation that most of the country had made. I'm really not a bad guy, he said. I'm not all bad. Some people need killing. So yeah, I think this is going to be quite an interesting look into, uh, yeah, a true crime on like a national scale. And also that type of journalism where like your job is to like go to war zones or like deal with the aftermath of like earthquakes and stuff like that um so yeah i think this one sounds pretty intriguing and i'm hoping to really enjoy it and then i have one more book on hold at the library which is actually ready for me to pick up but my library card limit is 20 books and i have 20 books at the moment one of them's actually laid back um because i'm still reading it something very bad um, and the one I'm really interested in, which I was sort of aware of, but I'd sort of forgotten about, so I was really glad to get a reminder, was The Britannia's An Ireland Quest by Alice Albania. I'm looking down, so I've just perched my laptop very precariously on a stack of all the hardbacks. Um, so it says, this is a story of Britain's islands and how they are woven into its culture, history, and collective psyche from Neolithic Orkney and Druidical Anglesey to the joys and strangeness of modern Thanet. We explore the furthest reaches of Britain's island topography, also known, once known by the collective term Brittany. Um, she takes the readers over borders and through disparate island cultures, past and present, listening to collective voices and submersive stories. For many years now, I have um, wanted to read more books about um, the history of Britain and just the United Kingdom in general, because I feel like my knowledge, we studied like, um, the Anglo-Saxons when I was at school, when I was probably in primary school. So I feel like my um, memory of all of that is appalling. And I just feel like we've got such a vast history. There's so much to know. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm really interested in it all. I'm particularly interested in island communities and I'm even more interested because all the books I've previously, um, you know, put on my TBR as books to read about this type of history have been written by men. And in all honesty, that's why I never get around to picking them up because I'm always like, oh. So yeah, I'm excited to see one written by a woman. Feel free to recommend me others if you know about any books about um, yeah, the history of Britain written by women. But I 
I'm interested in this one and I think it's interesting for it to just focus on um, island communities. And then the other few books I have to pick up are also new releases. One is Interesting Facts About Space by Emily Austin. I spoke about this in an anticipated releases video um, where I spoke about books by authors who I'd previously read books from. I really enjoyed her first novel and um, yeah, I was really interested to see she had a new one out. This sounds super weird um, and strange, so I'm not gonna go into the blurb here because I would have done that in the previous video, but yeah, um, excited to read more of her sort of quirky queer humour. And then another uh, queer novel by a woman I have to pick up is Nuclear Family by Kate Davies. So I've been aware of this author um, because she's previously written at least one um, queer, I think, romance um, that I have been interested in but um, have never got around to picking up. Whereas this one sounds a bit more like a family drama. Um, so it, I think I said nuclear family. Um, it says Lena buys DNA testing kits for her father and her twin sister. She thinks they'll enjoy finding out where their ancestors come from. She has no idea the gift will blow her family apart because Tom is forced to admit that his he isn't his daughter's biological father and that he and his late wife, Sheila, used a sperm donor. Uh, he's terrified they'll reject him and desperate to win them back, whatever it takes. Um, and the two sisters sort of disagree um, on their views on it. And one of them becomes obsessed with tracking down her biological father. So I think this is supposed to be a really interesting family drama, but I think um, she has quite a comedic tone to her books as well. So yeah, I'm intrigued to see how that works. And then the other one I have to pick up, which really, <laughs> I probably should cancel because um, it's 624 pages and it's fiction written by a man. So it's not going to help me out with the Women's Prize for Fiction Longlist or the Women's Prize for Nonfiction Longlist. And it's also not on any like project lists I have, but I am really interested in it. And that is Wellness by Nathan Hill. Um, this is about a couple who meet as college students in the 90s um, and yeah, start this life together, I believe, in Chicago. And then, yeah, we fast forward 20 years um, to their married life. And it says, alongside the challenges of parenting, they encounter cults disguised as mindfulness support groups, polyamorous would-be suitors, Facebook wars, and something called love potion number nine. And um, for the first time, they struggle to recognize each other and no longer youthful dreamers are forced to face their demons from unfulfilled career ambitions to painful childhood memories of their own dysfunctional families. And um, so, yeah, I think this is supposed to be a kind of really expansive look at married life and all the nuances to it. And I've heard really good things about this and his first novel. So I would really like to read it, but um, I'm assuming there's people behind me. Actually, there is. I can see there's 11 people behind me waiting for this. So I don't know how likely it is that I'll read this in the three weeks, but I'll try. So those are the books that are waiting for me. I also have 28 other books on hold. Um, and I think they're probably going to start coming through quite quickly because a lot of these, my library tends to be three or four weeks behind new releases and quite a lot of these books are around that time window um, or even, yeah, um, first couple of weeks of February so they'll start coming soon. So I'm in a bit of a panic situation. Um, Johnny does have a library card that he doesn't really use so I probably should start requesting some books on his card but I, I feel like that's giving in and allowing myself to not read them quick enough so I'm not letting myself do that. Um, so what I thought I would also go through, I'm not going to go through those 28 books because God, we would be here forever. But what I did want to talk about is out of all the books I just spoke about, which ones do I have to return? And like, do, do they, which ones have to be read in the next few weeks because other people have them on hold? Okay, so it's these six. So it's not actually as bad as I thought it would be. Um, so yeah, a lot of the other ones other people haven't requested. I probably shouldn't say this in a video because anyone living in Norfolk now is probably requesting them all. And then the other thing I just wanted to mention before I go is which ones are eligible for the Women's Prize long list and therefore like, I'm hoping to tell some of these are on it because if not, yeah, I'm gonna have to try and read the long list as well as all these books, so yeah. So I'm pretty sure all of these are eligible. So it would be quite mean if none of these are on the list, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, and I, I think I included quite a few of these in my predictions video and um, yeah, so God, I really hope a few are on it and I hope I've read a few of them because otherwise I'm so screwed. So yeah, I feel like this was super chaotic. Um, <laughs> I probably, what I sometimes do is I like add up the page count of every book I want to read in a month and work out how many pages I need to read a day. I'll do that off screen and I'll write that here for you so you know. Um, bearing in mind that doesn't even factor in the books that I need to pick up from the library in the next few days. So um, yeah, 
March is going to be chaotic. Wish me luck. I would love to know what your reading plans are for March. If you have read any of the books I have mentioned, if you plan to read any of them, what you're planning to do about the Women's Prize for non-fiction long list and the Women's Prize for fiction long list. There's also the International Booker coming up, which I may be tempted to dabble in this year because I'm trying to read translated fiction. So yeah, I need to go and uh, have some of my mint tea, which I think is in there getting more and more cold as I film this. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.